All right, so um, good morning. I'm gonna do the introductions because this is a 30 minute session and they probably have a lot more to say than what I have to say. So um, the, you'll hear first from Susan uh, Wigener, uh, iterating on process and platforms, changing up our workflow. Susan manages web projects for the Field Museum in Chicago. Previously, she coordinated media projects for the opening exhibitions of the 9-11 Memorial um, Museum. Um, she has an MA in Museum Studies from George Washington and a BA in History and Anthropology from the University. I'm Susan Wagodner. Good morning. Um, I'll be talking today about how our team at the Field Museum has tested a bunch of different solutions for managing our tasks and projects, which I gather is not like the most exciting topic, but I think it's really important and I'm a big nerd about this, so I hope that you will bear with me and always really happy to talk about um, more specifics of what we're doing or hear how you're using different um, products and platforms to um, manage your own work. Um, so today, um, we're just gonna talk largely about project management platforms, so tools for planning, organizing, and tracking work and staff resources. Um, so I'm at the Field Museum, which has about 500 full um, staff, FTE, um, but I manage um, projects for a small team in digital communications where um, we theoretically have about seven of us, but we've had some staff turnover this year, so we have a couple open positions and we've moved things around. Um, we had a media producer who left and we ended up filling that role with a coordinator just because of um, what we needed for where we are um, in the kinds of projects that we're doing. So um, for the first two years, I was coordinating an in-house team that was building microsites to promote exhibitions, um, which very excitingly for me, we are moving away from to focus on redesigning our own um, website and how we'll manage that website over the next couple of years. Um, and then we also work closely with a range of other departments around the museum. Um, but right now, we are largely managing either our own workflow or workflows that we're working with with um, consultants um, and using a platform for that. We often um, try to have conversations with other departments about bringing them into our tool or um, how we can kind of work more closely together on how we track those pieces. Um, but it is an ongoing process for us. And I think it's taken us a little while to feel like we're in a really good place about what we're doing. Um, and now we're thinking a lot more about like, we love where we're at and how can we bring other people into it. Um, a colleague of mine in exhibitions mentioned to me the other day that sometimes they have trouble even getting like people on their staff to open Google Docs, um, which is not the case for my team. So I really do recognize that we have the luxury of having a pretty small and digitally oriented team. So I am coming from a little bit more of that place where we do have a little bit more of a culture of being able to iterate on what we're doing and try different things. Um, but I hope that some of our missteps and iterations might help you find something that might work a little bit better for you if you're looking for a tool to help. Um, so over the last, um, since I started at the field, so about over the last two and a half or three years, we have tried using all of these different platforms to manage our workflow in different ways. Um, and sometimes we've used them overlapping with each other. So like a moment where it's like, should this be in Basecamp or Trello? Like, what are we moving to this um, other platform? So like, it is a lot for sure. Um, and I think we um, spent a lot of time thinking about what works for us and how um, we might use it. And so um, if you're familiar with these tools, you probably know that Basecamp uses a lot of lists. Um, it sort of allows for communications and files, but there can be some organizational issues. Trello um, has this really like nice cards format that some people love, but you have to be really diligent about keeping it organized um, or you might just just lose track of those cards. Um, Meister task is similar to Trello. Um, I'll tell you a little more about it later. We do track some things in Google Sheets just because they're easy for us to share with other departments. Um, and then since May of this year, we've been using Airtable, which if you haven't heard of, it's really cool. It's a um, relational database that you can display in a lot of different ways. And so for us, we're finding a lot of great flexibility there that we didn't find in other tools. Um, so, are we crazy? Am I? Yes, a little bit. 
Um, and sometimes I think I was pulling my hair out just like in terms of too many projects, too many ways to think about things. Um, and so this is really like our effort to come to terms with what is working for us. Um, so why would we do this? Um, there are a lot of reasons. So as I said, we did have some staff turnover and I think just when new people come in, they have different preferences, different ways that they like to work. We are Midwesterners, so we are often trying to be very nice to people and accommodate <laughs> um, different preferences. <laughs> um, but a really big challenge for us was finding a way to represent the kinds of daily um, social media content or website content or requests we were getting from other people with longer term project based um, ways of tracking. So we might want to track um, a microsite we're building separately from our like daily tasks that we have to get done, but it makes it really hard for me as a project manager to think about all of those things when they're in like three different boards in Trello for like different types of requests. and. Um, so that was a big challenge, um, kind of how to get a project-based view versus a high-level view. Um, we also spend a lot of time trying to get colleagues in other departments on board, again, with varying <laughs> levels of success. Um, and for us, that means that sometimes, like, we can't even get colleagues in other departments to keep a Google Sheet updated. So we love to track things, but many others do not. So um, kind of how do we not put it all on ourselves to keep something updated? Um, and then we also know that tools don't create a process, but I think sometimes you like need a little something to jumpstart um, your team when you're having a challenge and finding a new way to sort of try things or organize around them for us has meant that it gave us a reason to iterate and rethink things as opposed to just like how do we tweak endlessly for something that isn't working for us. So it gave us a good reason to talk about process. Um, so what have we learned? Um, pretty matters to us. I think that like this is something that you use every day if you're using a project management tool. Um, and I personally, you might feel very differently, do not like the way that Trello looks. I find it really hard to tell like what's high priority, what maybe doesn't need to be dealt with as quickly, like who's doing what at any given time. And if you are using Trello in a way that like does that, I would love to see it. Um, because I think it can just be really tough. And you might find that um, in Trello, you're using project-based boards, and you have lists, and you're using an agile workflow. But for me, it was really tough to think about an agile workflow in some boards, and then also just like things that have to get done in another. Um, we tried Meister Task, which is a lot like Trello, but I like how it looks better, um, <laughs> which isn't nothing really. Again, when you're using something every day, um, Meister Task like Trello has a free version. There's also a paid version that lets you um, automate certain tasks between different columns. So you can do something like, oh, like when I move my task into the done column, it just marks it off as done. So just like little tiny things that might save you time if that's something that's of interest. Um, and then it also has a really kind of clean interface in terms of like how many tasks are assigned to different people, which can help in a really high level way. Um, I also like that it uses these big green check marks to tell you that something is done because when you just like hide things you've done already, I don't feel like you get that sense of like satisfaction that you're actually <laughs> making progress. Yeah. Um, Automation has helped us a ton. We use um, a platform called Zapier to automate tasks between different website platforms. So we have a form that we ask people in other departments to fill out when they need something related to the website, but we can literally like zap that form into our project management tool. So I'm not like retyping the request that somebody had. I can just immediately look at it in the tool that we're using. And then I can also <laughs> Um, like slack myself a notification that that request came in so that I'm not missing that there's something new. Um, we also work with outside contractors. We're working with a consultant who uses like the first version of Basecamp right now, which is a little bit of a throwback, but we're actually like automating those tasks into our tool too so that we can still keep a really holistic list. There's moments where like that does result in having to check something off twice, but for us the like a ability to see everything in one place is beneficial enough that it's worth it. Um, 
I like being able to see when people on my team complete different tasks, just so I'm not like nudging them about something that they've already done. And so um, we also have an alert that's set up. So if something gets checked off um, in our tool, we might get a Slack alert on it. Um, and then um, IFT, I-F-F-T, is another platform that can help automate tasks, if that sounds interesting to you. Um, features you love can brighten your day. Hopefully this isn't just me. Again, you're using this all the time. MeisterTask has this really friendly um, dashboard when you log into it, which if you've ever looked at Trello's um, like home dashboard, you might be thinking like, yes, I could see why you might like this better. Um, and it's not so much that it says good morning and that it has a motivational quote, but <laughs> it, um, is giving me a really clean list of projects and it also lets um, automates telling me what's due today. So if you're looking at that like upper right hand corner, you can say anything with a to do list in the next couple of days will show up here or I have these other things I want to say I'm going to focus on and then they show up that way. So like looking for those interfaces that will help you understand what your priorities are, I think can be super, super helpful. Um, we are now using Airtable um, and I think we were only able to structure Airtable, which has a million possibilities and a million templates that you can work with in a way that works for us because we had already tried so many other platforms. Um, and so for us, flexibility is really key. So Airtable lets you see um, tasks by project. So here you're seeing um, like some things in a to-do list for our Antarctic dinosaurs exhibition, some things in a to-do list for our ancient Mediterranean exhibition, and we can literally filter down like project by project and just see those lists. Um, or we can see a list that's more like um, a Trello board where I might move cards from like a backlog into doing to a done, um, and you just set that up for the different views that you want. Um, and it also has nice options where if you've set collaborators, people, um, you can view individual to-do lists as opposed to project-based to-do lists. So like these kinds of changes have really been important for us because of that piece I was talking about before where it was like some things we had to look at at projects and sometimes we really wanted to see the big picture. Um, so there's no platform that everyone will love. What can you do? I think when you're selecting a platform, think about how your team communicates. Your team probably communicates a little differently than my team. We use Slack a lot, so getting email notifications was really not important to us and frankly like somewhat annoying. Um, but it's things like that. Um, explore the available integrations and features. What can help you um, move things around? What might you want to automate to help you just kind of keep things moving forward um, as efficiently as possible so you don't waste time that you probably do not have to waste if you are working on a small digital team. Um, we have gathered requirements. We've tested lots of other platforms that we didn't even end up using for a period of time. Um, and for us, that meant thinking about things like um, email notifications, how we want to be able to upload documents, um, how we want to be able to um, configure different settings. and. <coughs> There's a lot of pieces that are specific to your team that are worth thinking about and making your colleagues talk about before you make the jump, and that'll help you have buy-in from them when you do make that jump. Um, I think we're always looking for ways to either justify the cost. There are free tools, but sometimes the updates you might get if you spend a little bit of money might actually be worth it. Um, and so just thinking about those differences and what that means for your team. And we always ask if there's a nonprofit discount. <laughs> um, it sounds so obvious, but I think a lot of people forget to ask. Um, and I, for us, this has been easy. I know it might be harder for others, but don't be afraid to switch from something you don't like to something that you do like. I think if you're really finding the tool is hindering your process, it's worth thinking about what the move might be um, to sort of make all of your lives a little bit easier. Um, and so when you make a switch, um, really helps to take a little bit of time to determine structure early on. Um, for us, we don't use due dates as much as some people might because of how our team works. It's more of a, like what needs to happen like as soon as possible, what needs to happen this week, what needs to happen like this month. And so not putting like really specific dates that appear on a calendar works for us. Um, and so I didn't want as calendar based of an interface, for example. 
Um, make it clear to your team what the benefits are, so why they should use it. It might be that they can find all information about a particular task in one place. It might be that like it's really gonna make your boss's life easier to know what everyone is doing and not have to always be like nudging you about the status on something. Um, I really do have to be a champion for our platform and remind people, like, put it in Airtable, make sure you're tracking this. Like, oh, you told me this is done, did you check it off? Like, and I think the more you nudge people, the better we all just get at forming those habits. Um, and we also use our platform to help guide our agenda. Um, for um, Our team isn't currently doing daily stand-ups, but for our weekly check-ins, we do refer to it whenever we're um, talking about projects. We don't just put something into the tool and never talk about it again. And I think that really helps pe um, keep people accountable. Um, so I'm pretty much out of time. I think we could take like one question and then I'll share the slides out on Twitter and I did add a like list of just some examples and some things to think about at the end. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Um, okay, if there are no questions, I'm gonna let them keep moving. Oh, one question oh, over there. Yeah. How did you roll these out to the staff? Did um, you guys do like some professional development meetings or do you just kind of send out a link and say like figure it out or um, so usually <laughs> we would talk about timing the switch before we made it so we would spend some time thinking about um, what do we need to move what are some things that are lingering that maybe like don't need to be migrated um, and then so that sort of helps plant the seed you set a date so it's not a surprise to people and then yeah we would walk through the different um, features, different things you might need to know to use it. We found Airtable has a little bit more of a learning curve just because there's so many options, but now that we're in it, it's really like fast and efficient for us. 